Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Battles. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Belmont, located in Mississippi County, Missouri, on November 7th, 1861. On September 3rd, 1861, Major General Leonidas Polk crossed into Kentucky and secured Columbus. The city was a key position sitting on a bluff overlooking the Mississippi River. Polk sat on the banks with 17,000 men and 150 guns. This closed the Mississippi River to Union shipping. In response to this push, Union Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant seized Paducah. Once the Surrey was secure, Grant requested permission to attack Columbus, but Union Commander Major General John Fremont never responded to his request. For the next two months, no real engagement occurred between the two commanders. Working on intelligence, Fremont decided to use Grant to distract the Confederate reinforcements of Arkansas. To do this, he ordered Grant to make a move towards Columbus to keep the Confederates pinned there. Grant was determined to distract the Confederates by attacking Belmont, a small hamlet consisting of three shacks and a ferry landing. Grant's men numbered about 3,115 troops and was organized under Brigadier General John A. McLaren and Colonel Henry Dougherty. On November 6, escorted by two gunboats, the USS Tyler and the USS Lexington, Grant's men left on the steamboats. At approximately 8.30 a.m. on November 7th, Grant's forces disembarked at Hunter's Farm, just north of Belmont and out of range of the Confederate gun batteries at Columbus. As a side note, the Confederate gun batteries were featuring 10-inch Columbiads, an 11-inch Howitzers, and a Lady Polk, the largest Confederate artillery piece, also known as a 128-pounder Whitworth rifle. As Grant prepared his positions, Confederate Brigadier General Gideon J. Pillow, oh, I love that name, deployed opposite of Grant along a low ridge protecting the Confederate camp. Grant attacked the Confederate skirmish line later in the morning. Both armies consisted of green troops and this was their first battle. By 2 p.m. the Confederate troops were withdrawing and the fighting became one-sided. Pillow's line began to collapse as the troops started withdrawing. The retreat began to panic when Union artillery opened up on the retreating Confederate troops. The Union troops surged into the camp from three sides and the Confederate troops abandoned their colors otherwise known as the battle flag. They also abandoned their artillery and ran towards the river trying to escape. During this assault, Grant's horse was shot out from under him and he had to climb onto his second horse. At the end of the engagement, the Union troops were obviously inexperienced. General McClernand walked into the center of the camp and asked for three cheers. A bizarre situation occurred and the Union soldiers got carried away by their victory. They began to loot and pillage the Confederate camp. To regain control of his men, Grant ordered a Confederate camp burned. In the confusion of the smoke and flames, some wounded Confederates in tents burned to death, causing Confederate soldiers to believe the injured men had been murdered. Grant marched his men back to the ships, and with them were over a hundred prisoners and some captured artillery. It was at this time that the Union troops were attacked by a Confederate counterattack led by CS Brigadier General Frank Cheatham. While Cheatham was attacking, the Confederate guns, including the Lady Polk, opened fire and hit the Union ranks. Union troops successfully retreated that evening, returning to the river to a similar position it was in in the early morning hours. The final casualties were 607 Union casualties and 641 Confederate losses. The Confederates viewed this as a Southern victory since Grant couldn't hold the camp. Another side effect of this was the battle experience that Grant gained. He would take lessons learned here and in future battles increase his ability to command. Finally, the battle gave President Lincoln a good impression of Grant's abilities, setting the stage at that time that in the future Grant would have a bigger influence on future battles. Join us next time for the Battle of Ivy Mountain, located in Floyd County, Kentucky, on November 8th and 9th, 1861.